In this video, uh, going to have a look at uh, motor controllers and motors in more depth, uh, get some profiles on them, see how they react to different pulse width modulation schemes and different motor controllers. Uh, this is going to help me decide what sort of motor and motor controller I want to use, uh, what I need to be aware of when I'm writing the software for it, and really sets me up for the next video where I'll probably go in more depth and look at the MicroPython code I'll use for actually managing the the motor and the encoders and keeping motors in sync and all that side of things. So I wrote some more MicroPython code really just to exercise the motor and get some uh, encoder values off the motor to see how fast it's going at different speeds and different scenarios. Uh, so this is the code here. Um, I'll sort of start from the end here. So I set up a uh, object called my 298, which is uh, using a library L298. Uh, I actually put together to set up the the, the motor controller uh, interface. So it uh, takes the pulse with modulation pin number, the two uh, control pin numbers and the frequency that I want to write, run the motor at and sets up an object to represent the, the motor. I've also written this little data logger where it writes out uh, data to a file as the program runs. So at each speed it counts up the number of encoder pulses that come back from the motor encoder so I know how fast it's actually running when I set these different speeds. Otherwise it's just a continuous uh, while loop and runs through different speed settings and what I wanted to see was uh, are the speed changes linear uh, does it make a difference with if I uh, run at different frequencies uh, and I'll show you the graphs that came out of this later on uh, this is the, the actual set speed routine I won't go into the detail here because the next video I'll get into the actual code I'll need for running the motors and it probably won't look exactly like this so let's have a look at uh, this code running. Okay, this is the code running on my new uh, test bed I put together. So it's a little bigger so I can fit more breadboard area and I can fit two motors on it for some tests coming down. You can see here it's dropping through the different speeds. Started at 100% duty cycle, it's now down to 60% duty cycle. At the end of each duty cycle it writes out the result of the number of encoder pulses that's read off the motor. And I can pull those files and uh, bring them into Excel. Okay, this is the graphs I produced. Um, so running through the various duty cycles, that's shown on the x-axis here, the duty cycles, uh, 60, 80, 100 percent. And then the number of encoder pulses I measured. So each one of these uh, uh, speed tests or duty speed tests ran for three seconds. So uh, if it comes back with say 1500 pulses that's over three seconds so that means about 500 pulses per second. Uh, the tests I did were by varying the frequency so uh, see one example here I started at uh, 1500 Hertz to start with then a thousand Hertz 700 Hertz and 300 Hertz. I also did some tests where I uh, added some resistance to the motor to see what's the impact of uh, that resistance would be. Sort of shows you how the torque is uh, responding to the different frequencies as well. So I did uh, one test for the 300 hertz uh, set of duty cycles and one at uh, 1500 uh, hertz. So let's have a look at the charts here. So some of the things you'll notice is uh, Again, this is using the L298 controller, which uses a, a bipolar junction transistor to, to drive a set of uh, MOSFETs and an H bridge. Uh, and you'll see later on this sort of has affected some of the curves. So you see the curves here. As I increase the pulse width, it's not linear. It's not a straight line here. There's some sort of curve going on. Uh, so it'll be hard to determine that if I'm at a certain duty cycle what the speed of the motor would be because it's going to be some variability here. It's not going to be a straight uh, linear line. And then the other thing you see here is there's a lot of variability between the different uh, frequencies used. So uh, 1500, the speeds were 
substantially lower than at 300 hertz uh, frequency used even for the same duty cycles and that also had different uh, uh, differences over the the range of duty cycles um, and the last tests uh, these two here the 1500 hertz with uh, resistance and the 300 hertz res with resistance you can see that the motor goes slower with the resistance and I I put these two in the same color so for the 1500 hertz uh, with resistance you see uh, it's lower but again it's not uh, the same amount of difference over the whole range of the 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 speeds and same for the uh, 300 hertz although it's faster than the 1500 hertz uh, driven uh, duty cycles uh, the difference here varies over the the range of duty cycles so again it's going to be really hard to computer specific speed based on the resistance the motor's seen and the the frequency it's it's getting uh, so the next test I did is I swapped out the the controllers so I changed from using an L298 controller to using a TB6612 uh, controller which is a, a pure MOSFET driven uh, controller doesn't have any uh, discrete uh, uh, transistors involved you see here the result is a lot more linear curve I only did two frequencies for the 1500 and 300 for comparison um, but you see there's not a little difference between the 1500 and 300 Hertz um, they actually just about look like they're on the same line and you see it's very linear so this dotted line here is uh, the uh, linear regression line and uh, again not a lot of variability between uh, the linear line and the actual res results I was getting from the different duty cycles and finally these two here the yellow and the red which had resistance on the motor although there's an impact here it seems to be about the same impact over the whole range of duty cycles so again very easy to calculate that uh, resistance has an effect but it seems to have a very uh, just a certain amount of effect over the whole range and finally just having a look at it all the results here you can sort of see where this uh, TB6612 results this line here uh, just shows itself as being much more linear than what I was getting with uh, uh, the L298 uh, controller okay final set of tests I did I was interested in seeing what things look uh, like at the the motor basically seeing uh, how current and voltage was delivered to the motor especially with the two different uh, types of boards so the bipolar junction transistor board L298 and the TB6612 MOSFET based uh, controller board and then I, I tried it at the two ranges of the frequency 1500 Hertz and the 300 Hertz uh, the way I measured things at the motor um, so I measured uh, what was coming out of the microcontroller uh, for the L298 on the top trace and then what was happening at the motor on the bottom trace either by measuring the voltage across the motor or measuring the current by measuring the voltage across a, a resistor. Uh, I found I couldn't do the same thing with TB6612 uh, because it has a common ground to the motor and the input side so they weren't isolated. I was getting ground loops and all sorts of weird things happening when I was trying to use two traces of the oscilloscope. Uh, so what I found I had to do is I again measured just the uh, the signal coming in from the uh, microcontroller on the main oscilloscope and then used a portable handheld oscilloscope that uh, just ran on battery power to measure across current across the one ohm resistor and the voltage across the 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 actual motor so the results of this so first let's have a look the L298 controller uh, I ran them 1500 Hertz and 300 Hertz and then I in this case I was looking at 60% uh, duty cycle and 10% duty cycle and looking for the differences um, so some of the things to look at here is uh, I was looking at the power consumption across the the motors using just my power supply meter so you can see uh, the current consumption 
uh, was something like uh, 0 0.032 or 38 um, milliamps when running at 60% and went down to 22 or 23 uh, milliamps at uh, when running at 10%. Um, so just note that lower uh, uh, power consumption at the at the ten percent, uh, so it's sort of leaving some current on the table here. It doesn't go, get near to to zero current, even though we're down to ten percent duty cycle. Uh, the other thing to notice it's probably best to see it here on the on this waveform here. So this is the actual pulse width modulation coming in from the microcontroller. Just the 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 straight on off uh, signal and then you can see the voltage happening at the uh, what it's seen at the motor and remember the motors act as inductors so uh, there's something weird happening at the in this case be the the end of the end of the power to the motor where it's dropping down but not going immediately down to to zero volts and if we look at current too, so again, current seen at the motor for the L298 controller. Um, let's have a look at the 10% uh, duty cycle. And one difference you can see here is the the height of the waveform uh, seen at the motor for, for current uh, usage. So at 300 hertz, we're seeing more current being delivered because uh, it's a longer time period. Than at uh, 1500 hertz, and again, I think that's the impact of the inductance of the motor is how uh, quickly the current can get delivered there, and that may be some of the reason for the non-linearity in the in the duty cycle versus speed uh, graphs we just saw. So look at the same thing uh, for TB6612 motor controller. So again, this is using MOSFETs, which really just turn voltage on and off rather than running it through a range. Um, so one thing you'll notice here is uh, the current usage. Uh, so at 300 hertz the current usage was similar to what I saw with the L298. At 1500 hertz is much lower but remember we got the same speed uh, as the 300 hertz one. So I think this may be just something about the efficiency uh, of the interface from the controller to the motor at that frequency so this is probably telling me that I want to run the mo pulse width modulation at around 1500 uh, hertz to the most effectively deliver power and then uh, we saw, see at the the lower duty cycle in this case 20 percent again the the powers uh, lower at the 1500 hertz for our usage lower at 1500 so it's been more efficient at that frequency and then remember when we compare it to what we saw with the L298 um, current usage where it's around 22 milliamps and this one's just as low as 2 milliamps um, I think that's the the nature of the bipolar uh, transistor versus uh, MOSFET that it can because it's directly just switching the voltage on and off it's much more effective and just uh, delivering the true uh, signal to the motor and then finally just having a look at the the current uh, delivered to the the motor in this case there's probably not much we can read from this handheld oscilloscope it's a bit too rough uh, to see anything other than the, the waveforms uh, that are seen at the at the motor. So my conclusions are: I'm going to use the TB6612 motor controller uh, versus the L298. The TB6612 is a lot more efficient. It seems to be a lot more linear. Uh, the one disadvantage is it doesn't supply as much current as an L298 can but for the size of motors that I have it should uh, supply a lot more current than I'll ever need. The other conclusion is I'll be running this at uh, the higher frequency the 1500 Hertz for the pulse width modulation again uh, efficiency seems to be a lot better at that uh, frequency than low ones like 300 300 is probably uh, way too low for a motor controller anyway. <laughs>